All right, let's begin discussing a little bit about how chromatographic separation uh, works. I want to give you a quick rundown uh, and an animation of some of the uh, underlying principles and sort of how to think about the way a molecule will behave in one of these chromatographic systems. We're going to start with a question. How does part uh, partitioning between stationary and mobile phases help us separate the components of a mixture? So we're going to get down to the underlying uh, root principles of chromatography here. First, uh, we're going to go through our cast of characters as we normally do. We'll be using gray spheres to represent the silica surface of a normal phase TLC plate. Now, this could just as easily be alumina or uh, some other relatively high polarity material, but silica and, and alumina are the two that you'll see the most of. Next, we'll be using blue spheres to represent the solvent molecules as they move through the system. These would be the mobile phase. We'll be using a yellow polygon to represent low polarity compounds and a purple polygon to represent a higher polarity compound within the mixture. So we can see how the polarity of different compounds will affect their behavior in a normal phase chromatographic system. So let's begin, as we normally do, by looking at the system we'll be using, but zooming in so that we're looking at it from a molecular perspective. If we zoom all the way in to the base of the plate at the molecular level, what we'll see is a stationary array of silica beads over which is flowing a moving array of solvent molecules. These are the stationary and mobile phases. Now if we introduce one of our compounds to the system at the upstream end, in this case the higher polarity compound, we can watch and view what happens when I release this compound and allow it to do what it does when it's in this chromatographic system. So let's do that now. Notice that when I release this compound, it's swept along by the mobile phase, but it occasionally takes a break and adheres to the silica surface on the stationary phase. Because of its high polarity, it spends a large portion of its lifetime adhered to that surface and therefore it moves very slowly from one side to the other. Now in contrast, let's take a look at the lower polarity of the two compounds. If I similarly introduce this compound into the system at the upstream end and then release it, let's watch what happens. Again, it moves when it's in the mobile phase and is stationary while on the silica, but notice that the residence time on the silica is very low now because its relative affinity is decreased compared to the higher polarity material. What this means is that the compound will move faster through my chromatographic system. Now finally, to illustrate how we can separate compounds using this phenomenon, let's put both of those compounds into the system simultaneously. When I release them once more, let's watch what happens. Again, they're swept along by the mobile phase but our yellow compound is moving at a higher rate of speed because it spends more of its lifetime dissolved in the mobile phase and less of its lifetime adhered to the stationary phase. In this way we can separate two different types of compounds in space even though they were just part of the same original physical mixture. Now let's take a look at how a TLC plate will behave on the macro scale. So this time we'll zoom in, but not quite as far. This time we'll be using the entire surface of the screen to represent the surface of a TLC plate. To begin the experiment, we need to draw a starting lane so that we have an idea of where exactly our compounds were when the chromatographic separation began. At this point, we're going to spot our compounds or mixtures of compounds onto the plate. For demonstration purposes, I've created spots of pure purple compound and pure yellow compound. Now that the spots are in place on the starting lane and appropriately spaced, I'll introduce the mobile phase to the system and allow it to wick up from the bottom to the top of the plate, carrying along my analytes at whatever speed they may go depending on their partitioning behavior. Here comes the mobile phase. And as you can see, again, our yellow compound, by virtue of its lower polarity, moves a greater proportion of the distance traveled by the solvent or by the mobile phase. We can qualitatively at this point say that our yellow compound moves farther than our purple compound in this system. 
but we prefer to have a quantitative method of describing this behavior. To do this, we measure the distance traveled by the solvent. We also measure the distance traveled by each spot from the starting lane to the center of that spot. And we then calculate a number called the retention factor, which is equal to the distance traveled by the sample divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. In this way, we have a numerical value to associate with the mobility of each compound. The RF of our yellow material would be larger than that of our purple material, indicating that it's expected to move at a higher rate and therefore a greater distance, and therefore must be a lower polarity material than the purple compound.